for a very long time now, all we hear when we talk about the Burb frame is a jet stream Zephyr, almost all viable endgame builds revolves on her turbulence ability, and in fact, even with the recent rework still, many believed, including me, that you must build Zephyr around his turbulence ability when it comes to dealing with high level enemies, but, that changed today, let's set aside that defensive focus builds, and bring in the new breed of Zephyrs, I'm talking about a nuke Zephyr build with insane damage output, I'm talking about her Funnel Clouds augment, right now, I can honestly say that Funnel Clouds is way better than Jetstream when it comes to endgame plays, Jetstream will just let you have fun using your turbulence, but Funnel Clouds will let you one shot kill every enemy trap within your clouds, the idea for a nuke Zephyr is pretty simple, the first step would be grouping enemies, when they are tightly grouped, you then cast your tornadoes, after that, you can kill them with any corrosive weapon, well, that's the old trick, the new one will require you to do the same process only this time, instead of a corrosive weapon, try out a weapon modded with gas, with a 100% status chance, in short, try out redeemer prime, the thing about redeemer prime is it works perfectly when enemies are tightly grouped, it allows this weapon to fully take advantage of its gas damage, giving you that one shot prowess that you desire, the good news is, no matter how high the level, or the armor of the enemies, they die with this combo when you have flawlessly grouped them in place, if you think grouping enemies is hard, then you might forget about ferox, a primary weapon which has a throwing mechanic that creates a field dealing electric damage and pulls enemies within 10 meters toward the ferox every 2 seconds, it's one good option to group enemies together. But wait, there are more ways to group enemies, remember that the Xenuric Focus has this ability called Void Singularity which pulls enemies within 20 meters towards the operator, this is better than the Ferox as it has better pull range, and it's very effective, but there's more, remember that there's also Magus Anomaly that pulls enemies within 20 meters towards your frame, it's a faster Void Singularity, and it's way more efficient to use compared to the first two options, however, in terms of safety, then Ferox is way better because you can cast it on a safe distance, both Magus Anomaly and Void Singularity will endanger Zephyr especially if there are enemies that will make your turbulence useless, do remember that even though turbulence offers complete invulnerability to incoming projectiles, Zephyr is still vulnerable to status effects, staggers, knockdowns, melee attacks, area of effect attacks, and explosions, if you managed to group enemies with this type of damage, then Zephyr will die instantly for sure, however, this doesn't mean that there's no solution to this problem, you can still use Magus Anomaly and Void Singularity to group enemies but, be sure to add Magus Lockdown on the mix, this is another operator arcane that stun enemies for a couple of seconds, with this arcane you will be able to stun lock those enemies close to you, allowing you to safely group them, but take note, I did not say that you can just pick one grouping techniques, in fact, you can incorporate all grouping techniques to your Zephyr if you have them already, now that we are done with the details on how to nuke enemies with Zephyr's funnel clouds, let's head over to the build section of this guide, to create a nuke Zephyr, simply put the funnel clouds augment, some efficiency, and then lots of duration for her turbulence, even though we will be relying on her tornadoes to kill enemies, we still need survivability and the best way to survive while using Zephyr is through her turbulence ability, anyway, range won't matter that much on our tornadoes, as we will most likely be grouping enemies and one-shotting them with our redeemer prime, but, I suggest that you don't go below 50% range as it will make your turbulence worthless, Zephyr's turbulence works by creating a spherical barrier around the player, that redirects all projectiles and greatly lowers the accuracy of hit scan weapons, adding range mods increases the area this barrier covers, but it's basically insignificant, unless you go full ham with overextended, it's likely not going to affect the ability in any useful way, however, negative range mods, such as narrow minded, can reduce the area of the barrier enough that some projectile shots will hit you due to the game not being able to redirect them in the shorter span of time, long story short, range doesn't really do much, but if you have less than 50%, turbulence doesn't work right, that is why I have both stretch and cunning drift to give me enough range for my turbulence, and lastly, don't forget to add rolling guard, this mod will give you that time to safely recast your turbulence ability, for the redeemer prime build, simply put all 4 dual status chance mods plus the drifting contact mod to achieve 100% status chance, remember that it should be magnetic and gas element, and, make sure that you have condition overload as this is the main catalyst which makes redeemer prime hit hard, also, 
Don't forget to equip it with Primed Fever Strike or the regular version of this mod so the gas element will have a higher damage value which allows it to proc more often than the other damage types. And lastly for the Ferox build, actually, we don't need any mods for the Ferox as we will be using it for utility but, it's good that we provide it with another safety net to further make this synergy efficient. I propose you modding your Ferox this way. With these mods, you will achieve 100% status chance on your throw, and it will proc blast more often. Do remember that Ferox only groups enemies but it won't disarm them or stun them in the process. They can still shoot you in the face, so, you should knock them down using the blast proc to completely strip their ability to harm you. So that's it. Like always, I hope that you have learned something from this video. If you did find it informative, please do give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching, Squad Leader signing off.